It is now the turn of Marco Zabrosi, tire modeling and driving simulator team leader at Pirelli, and Stefano Melzi, professor at the Politecnico di Milano. In their talk, they will present a methodology developed by Pirelli and the Politecnico di Milano to evaluate the soft handling of a vehicle using a DIM 400 simulator to achieve zero prototyping in the tire development process. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming. Thanks, VA Grade, for this kind introduction. I'm really pleased to be here today to show you the work we have done together with Politecnico di Milano and especially with Professor Melzi here um, about handling evaluation on uh, the dynamic simulator in the facility we have in partnership in Politecnico. Um, first of all, I want to step back a little bit on a slide that we showed um, last year, where we uh, highlight our strategy and our mm, simulator facilities around the world. Um, we, we showed you our static simulator that is placed in the headquarters in Milan and is the place where the activity that we have seen yesterday uh, with the um, Pagani Automobili presented by Franco Morsino and Emanuele Colomba was um, carried out. But also, last year we showed you that we have in place the installation of new simulators that are basically twins, um, as the Italian one. One is in China, and I'm proud to announce that this is now finally uh, in place. The installation is finished, it is in the fully operative uh, uh, conditions. And also the German one is in the ramp-up phase, but the installation is already finished. Um, one important thing is for us was that these three simulators were, um, need to be able to work together and for this reason we also implement uh, a solution to be able to get in contact in remote, um, to be able to follow session on the other side of the world, speaking directly with the driver and with the control room. Um, but today we will speak about uh, some different uh, kind of activity that is the one we have in place with Polytechnico. In Polytechnico we have this uh, dynamic simulator and uh, we have a research activity in, in place for the duration of two years. We are, uh, last year we worked a lot on this and I just want to leave Stefano explain a little okay. bit. Okay, thank you Marco. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the facility at Politecnico di Milano. Yeah, you know this facility, at least you know the model of simulator is a DIM 400. And uh, the most important characteristic of this simulator is that it is cable driven. So this allows to improve or increase the workspace. Uh, it is a six by six platform. So several maneuvers can be carried out in one to one scale, let's say. Then you are always able to decouple the yaw motion from the translations in each position on the simulator. I have to say that this um, important facility was uh, acquired by Polymy thanks to the contribution of Lombardia region and the contribution of the cluster of mobility of Lombardia region. Okay. Next. Yeah, it works. Oh, here are some of the researches that we are carrying out at Polymy. So we work on development of other systems and autonomous driving, especially for the subjective evaluation of such systems. And uh, we are also going on with a AI at edge uh, project that is a project uh, funded by European community where we have that the infrastructure drives several autonomous vehicles and uh, a human has to interact with the other vehicles, try to understand if their uh, behavior is predictable or not. Uh, we also work on smart roads. We had this project where we um, decided to apply a side wind to an, um, a van, let's say, and we asked several people to control the van to avoid rollover or invading the uh, adjacent lane. And uh, this to develop um, a sort of autonomous road that um, based on the value of measured side wind uh, speed can determine the speed limit or proper speed limit. We also try to improve the hardware that is already important by adding this dynamometric steering wheel that we developed. And we also add uh, uh, EEG in cooperation with uh, the Department of Bioengineering Bio at Polymy. And also we cooperated with some psychometric uh, with San Rafael University to add some yeah, questionnaire and so on to understand the reaction of drivers. Then we have this important cooperation with Pirelli uh, using based on DIM 400, but I think that now, Marco, it's better for you to go on. Okay, so 
Um, our target was after a certain experience we gained on the static simulator, we wanted to explore how much would be the benefit in using a dynamic simulator to enhance the subjective feeling, especially on the valuation of the tire, of course. So as a first step, we defined a use case uh, where we had the digital twin of a real car uh, we owned in our outdoor department, uh, a road model, and also two different tires that behaves quite different. Um, and we decided just to start from the, uh, the soft handling part. What is soft handling? When we speak about the evaluation of the tires, uh, we can divide it mainly in three main areas. So we have the on-center feeling that is what we are used to feel in everyday driving uh, and is related to the very small angles around the zero. And then we have soft handling that is um, a bit more wide region, but still where the tire is working, is working in the linear range. So for this uh, particular scenario, uh, we are mainly driving on straight line and our drivers are doing a certain number of maneuvers um, on the straight line. So first of all, uh, we decided to build uh, all the tools and models needed to, to run this uh, digital twin and to be able to correlate um, real data with the simulated one. So we started uh, characterizing the full vehicle uh, with the KNC test, damper test, inertial measurement, uh, also done in Polytechnico. And then we built the Vika real-time model and we gone through the validation phase. Of course, at that point, also the tire model has been characterized and put in together to, to have a good match of vehicle plus tire um, dynamics. Then we went to the dynamic simulator, but uh, unfortunately the first feedback was uh, quite bad, especially for this uh, very specific uh, feeling of the soft tendering. In fact, as you can see, um, the initial feedback was a lack of response um, around the zero, or at least something different compared to the, um, to the real world, because uh, sometimes it was uh, too much responsive, the delay was not felt in the proper way, and also in the soft handling area, we uh, realized that it was difficult for the driver to rate the proper transient response of the tire. Um, so we just stopped and had um, a quick brainstorming to uh, list the possible causes of this uh, mismatch on the subjective feeling. So we listed the, uh, a deep analysis of our outdoor measured uh, test. We, we thought about the queuing, we thought about the steering model, of course, then also the tire modeling um, capabilities. And we look at that through, uh, deeply through our uh, indoor measurements. So we started from outdoor, and what we discovered? We discovered that um, for the driver, all these maneuvers, I just explained two, two different uh, maneuvers. One for the on-center, that is a kind of a continuous sinusoidal um, steering input for very, very small uh, steering wheel angle, like plus, plus minus uh, three degrees. And the other one is a kind of step steer maneuver, but still in the low range of lateral acceleration. For both these maneuvers, we discussing with the driver, we realized that the feedback uh, of the driver was mainly target on the lateral acceleration, GLAT. So we immediately realized that the amount of uh, acceleration that we were uh, reproducing with the simulator was a key factor to be improved. And in fact, the three main outcome of this analysis was that uh, of course, we are focusing on the very small tire inputs, but also output of the vehicle. So we already thought to increase the magnitude of the response of the, of the simulator itself. We, um, we discover that the high fidelity was needed in re reproducing the gain and phase between the different degrees of freedom, and the absolute level of the response of the, of the platform was also important. So we start uh, thinking about, uh, about this queuing um, limitation together with VI grade guys. And the main areas where we wanted to improve was uh, the lateral acceleration uh, versus uh, your rate buildup that uh, can be scalable in a different way um, on the queuing uh, algorithm. 
but this we discovered that was giving some uh, misleading feedback to the to the driver and also we wanted to improve the low frequency range uh, while uh, the traditional queuing are working in as a passband filters so the low frequency due to the limited space is usually cut off so we started uh, thinking how to overcome this um, this limitation and the target was first of all to increase the gain of the global uh, motion queuing to equalize the magnitude of this all these degrees of freedom and to extend the bandwidth through the low frequency this had some challenges for us because first of all the, the limitation of the workspace was even if it's big uh, the info rendered was still a limitation and there was some safety concern uh, because we wanted to go through uh, the direction of a one-to-one -one queuing, so reproducing a, a realistic acceleration in the full scale, and also um, wanted to extend on the low band frequency. There was also the drifting problem of the signals because it double integrating the the acceleration signals, we got this drift. So what we developed in the end, we end up with a new innovative queuing that is uh, a positional queuing developed by VI Grade. Um, and we were enabled the possibility to run for the first time one-to-one -one maneuvers, at least for the soft ending application. This is something that is related for a very specific scenario that is a straight line. Uh, on top of that, we also add some uh, uh, help for the driver on the visual and acoustic feedback, as you will see in the next slide. So this is more or less our path. We started on the left side with um, a queuing that was not satisfying for us and that was not um, felt very good for the driver. And there was a lot of washout, both on the U8 and on the lateral acceleration. So we started uh, improving tuning the, the existing uh, queuing, where we was almost able to reach one-to-one -one, uh, scaling for the U8, but not yet on the lateral acceleration. And this was felt anyway uh, uncomfortable for the driver because there was some mis uh, match between different uh, degrees of freedom. And on the right side, the, the final um, picture where we had a best match in all these uh, degree of freedom. This is just to show you uh, how the simulator behaves with the different uh, queuing. You can also hear these acoustic feedback to give the driver the feedback that is approaching the limit of the platform. And this is just to show that for our application, the amount of displacement that we need uh, to reproduce properly the maneuver uh, was not um, properly uh, enhanced with the initial queuing, so we pushed on the one-to-one. -one. Okay, uh, then there was a second aspect that was really important for the driver to properly feel the response of the steering and in soft ending, and that was the tuning of the steering model. So the model offered by by great, Migrate, advanced steering model is enough in terms of degrees of freedom to reproduce the response of the steer, but uh, the tuning of this model can be quite tricky. So we tried to improve what was before, and this is what was before. So the idea was, for example, taking an, okay, track uh, lap, entire track lap, and try to match the response uh, it is the violet curve over the black curve. So the violet curve is from the model and the black curve is from the experimental result. So that was a fit all over the track lap. But actually the response was not good enough to reproduce what is between close to the zero. So when I'm just using very small steer angle. So we decided to improve this part a bit and to change, okay, the idea that was now, okay, try to, fall, to set up specific maneuvers to tune the um, parameters of the steering wheel on the steering model. And especially we decided to use different signals for the spectrum as before. So we used um, dynamometric steering wheel, the dynamometric wheels, and so we were able to measure um, the moment input by the driver and also the steering moment of the wheels. And this allowed us, for example, to understand or to quantify better the effect of power steering. And then we defined some KPI to reproduce the response of the steering in terms of quasi-static response. For example, on the left, you can see the comparison between the model, uh, that is the final one, is the yellow line, let's say, and the 
experimental data is the black line. And so you can see, for example, C12, that is the final model, is um, the last one that we developed with the proper tuning. Then we have also the red one, that is the, okay, default, uh, the previous methodology, let's say. Then we have also the blue one, that is the default model of the VI grade, so with the default parameters. So there was a huge improvement in this sense. And on the right, you can see a different type of maneuvers that were just swept signs here for different frequencies, trying to match black line with a yellow line. And that was obtained and was fully important. Then another step that was important, we noticed that, for example, with uh, the model C8, that was the previous methodology, we had uh, a problem when the steering wheel was released. So we have two maneuvers here. And the first maneuver is a sort of step steer, and then the steering is released. In the second case, we have a steel ramp, and then the steel is, is released. You can see that the red line actually uh, shows uh, oscillation that reveals an instability in the model. But okay, with the new model, with the proper tuning of the friction parameters, especially, we managed to um, have a stable model that is very realistic, and okay, provided the driver with a good feedback. Okay, running through the conclusion. Of this uh, part of the work, we developed this uh, innovative positional queuing that enabled us to reproduce one-to-one uh, -one maneuvers for the soft only application. And we also uh, developed a methodology to parameterize uh, the, an advanced steering model uh, and to uh, get um, a sufficient level of realism. Uh, and the outcome also of, the, of this activity was to understand that the queuing together with the steering model were, were found to be the key enabler for the driver <coughs> to correctly evaluate the soft handling. And the development methodology uh, led also to a much better consistency between the driving simulator test and the real uh, test and for the subjective assessment. So here I just reported three different comments of the driver and they are all, they are all enthusiastic about this, uh, this kind of feedback. About the next step. Okay, just some concluding remarks from my side. Uh, next step, um, we recognize now that queuing is really important. One-to-one -one queuing is really important. And also, uh, we recognize that um, we have this theory model that is important as well. But uh, we have some second order elements that are important, like for example, the tire response. And we are working on the tire model. Uh, we are improving the safe cam model. We are adding some kind of um, latency or delay that is not just related to the standard, uh, let's say, relaxation length. But we are adding something more uh, to reproduce some behavior. So we notice that we have a huge correlation between outdoor and indoor tests now. But uh, let's say indoor says you that, uh, okay, A is better from B is better than C. And it is true for indoor and outdoor. But the scaling is a bit different still. So we have some more elements to catch and it's probably in the tire model that we will work. And uh, as last, we have this driving simulator, and we are planning to um, improve uh, the queuing algorithm also for hardening application. So we know that we are not exploiting properly all the dimension of the platform for the hardening application, so we are going to work on that as well. And I think that that's all. That's okay. So thank you. Thank you.